hey, welcome back to How Come. It's really late at night. Um, so that's why I'm whispering. Happy belated International Coming Out Day to everybody. That was yesterday. Um, we had our amazing live forum. Thank you so much to everybody who came, everybody who participated. It was so nice to see your faces. Um, we also did like a bomb ass IG live afterwards. Um, and it was super fun. And we're going to make that whole conversation available on patreon.com slash how come the IG live is still up. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, I'm sitting here with my colleague, Grace. Say hello, Grace. That was amazing. Um, and speaking of amazing, this week's episode is going to be unreal. Um, it is with my friend Matthew Camp. He is one of the original pioneers of Instagram modeling, which has led him to his queer clothing company, Daddy Couture, his own radio show, Happy Campers, and a wildly successful membership site on OnlyFans, which is where you can find his greatest body of work. He was also named X Biz's 2020 Best Male Premium Social Media Star. And yeah, he just moved into this gothic mansion in upstate New York. Uh, so the sound on this episode is not the best. He's literally like walking around the whole mansion trying to find a good room for sound. It's really funny if you watch it on the Patreon. Also, it's insane. And like, I want to go make TikToks there. Before we start the episode, big shout out today to all form. Helix has gone beyond the bedroom. They started making sofas and just launched a new company called all form. They're making premium customizable sofas and chairs shipped right to your door to find your premium sofa and get 20% off all orders. Go to allform.com slash how come allform.com slash how come also thanks to Dipsy for supporting how come Dipsy is an audio app for full of short, sexy stories and guided sessions designed to turn you on and help you get in touch with yourself. Get a 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash howcome. That's dipsy, D-I-P-S-E-A, stories.com slash howcome. Okay, you guys are gonna love this episode. And yes, there are some audio problems, but like, it's fine. We all tried our best. I edited this episode to the gods. Um, Matthew's producer six also helped us out. It was a team effort. Um, so I hope you like it. I know you will. How come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna just. Yeah. Okay. I'm great. Yeah, great. Thank you, Six. Thank you, Six. Don't walk. <laughs> no, it wasn't the walking. It was cars. It literally sounded, though, like when somebody like in class is told to like move to the back and they like drag their seat. <laughs> okay, you guys, welcome my amazing guest, Matthew Cam. Hi. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm so excited that you're finally here. I'm giving myself a round of applause. Hi, thank you. <laughs> I can't believe we're finally doing this. We I know been years in the making. And one fucked up recording. <laughs> <laughs> Check out patreon.com slash how come for all those BTS. Um, so National Coming Out Day. It's like the theme of the week. Love it. My first coming out day, like officially. As what? As bye. Oh, nice. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations, what we say here. Congrats. Anybody who came out this year, congratulations to you. <laughs> Do you remember the first time you had an inkling you were gay? Oh, Star Wars. Yeah, I watched Ooh. Star Wars. And Job of the Hut. Well, first of all, I was like what? really turned on by the whole Job of the Hut scene. What part like, of oh. uh, like the Leia scene? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like- <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, this is real naughty. It's making me feel some kind of way. Mm-hmm. But then when she got rescued by um han solo i was like han solo is like the man super you know hot what i mean mm-hmm. yeah yeah so yeah. how old were you around then like 12 maybe okay but then like after i watched the movie i was like i need to go take a shower and like that was your first jerk off experience too right yeah i think so oh yeah okay so after you jacked off you were like i'm probably gay 
right? Like, did you have that thought? Well, I definitely was like fantasizing about having sex with men Mm -hmm. very early on. You know what I mean? It's like far back as I can remember. I never like, there was a cognitive dissonance from me actually realizing that it was like a lifestyle. Mm. Yeah, it was just like, uh, I'm just gonna like keep it separate. Cause you know, I was a kid, I didn't have to act on it anyway at that point. Right, but, yeah, um, nobody's like, yeah. hey, you fucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But then as I got older and it became more of like a, 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 a pressure to sort of like participate in that sort of activity, then it became more important, obviously. Um, yeah. And then I started realizing that just like, I had like straight friends growing up for sure. Like all my, all, all my friends were, not all of them, a lot of them were straight and a lot of mm-hmm. them were gay too. Mm-hmm. So like I'd go skateboarding and I had those friends and then I had like gay friends. They Out gay or down low gay? Yeah, out. Okay, cool. Yeah, they were out. Um, so I just realized like gay people were more fun. See what I've always found like I've always had closeted friends like just like me you know like I've always been attracted to other people who were just like like yeah they're all out now but like when we were young like none of us were and like thinking back on it I'm like yeah those were like my friends who like also liked theater oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) you know like we just had like similar interests yeah I love that but so yeah so you had your like two different group of groups of friends yeah I just remember, like, it just wasn't that big of a deal. Like, being gay wasn't that big of a deal. I just felt like it wasn't. And then also, like, I wasn't, like, friends with everyone in high school or anything, but just nobody cared. Everyone was doing their own thing, you know? That's great. I had a couple people that would be like, faggot, and I'd be like, yeah, bro, you want a blowjob? (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. But they weren't. it wasn't ever, like, that, that crazy. I like hearing that because I feel like even today, like, a lot of stories of being gay and coming out are like fraught with like your friends not thinking it's cool or like your family having an issue with it and it's nice that it's just like yeah it's not a it wasn't really an issue you're right do you when did you come out uh well funny story i was under age it was my birthday Mm -hmm. in early high school Mm -hmm. and there was this guy that I was friends with and we got drunk and ended up having sex. It was like (gasps) my 15th birthday. Oh my God. I know. It sounds cute, but also underage. (laughs) Yeah, but were you both underage? Yeah. Then that's, I mean, like teenagers hook up. I know they do. It's a thing. I feel like it's normal, actually. Is six moving chairs around? Like, what is that sound? (laughs) She's walking, yeah. Okay. (laughs) Go away. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Wait, that's it. I don't think that's what the sound was because I just heard it again. Whatever. It's cars. It's cars. Traffic, yeah. Is it too much? I can go to another room. You want to try? <laughs> the thing is, I have people working on the roof too here. So. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's just, a sound nightmare. I, I mean, it's it's There's fine. A, lots of different rooms. So this is this better for now, All right. guys. This is this is the grand tour. This is awesome. <laughs> By the end of the recording, we're gonna see have seen all of the rooms. <laughs> So, yeah, no, what I was going to say about, like, teens hooking up is, like, I feel like we get taught really early that, like, Romeo and Juliet had sex, you know, and they were, like, 13. Yeah. Well, there's, like, the caveat that you, like, have to get married and or die. (laughs) You know what I mean? Right. In order for it to be, like, socially okay. (laughs) Right. And be straight. Yeah. Well, 15 is cool. And so then were you, like just out to each other or like were you like ready well what had happened was my that guy was like best friends with my sister's best friend so Mm -hmm. he told my sister my sister told my mom my mom was like we uh heard you uh you know had some adult relations (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) yeah i was like mom we used condoms i feel like i'm mature enough to handle this and like and then yeah. I used my sister as an example, saying, like, she's just not mature enough to have sex at this age. But uh-huh. I'm like, I think like an adult, it's totally fine. She bought it. So <laughs> where did you grow up? California. So like, are your parents like just cool people? Like there wasn't that like conservative hump to get over? Well, I mean, kind of. I grew up Jehovah Witness. 
which is no. like, yeah, which is kind of crazy town. We haven't had one of those yet. <laughs> oh, I'm taking your witness virginity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fun. Can I get a witness? Ex-witness. <laughs> what is growing up like that like? You know, it's interesting. You have like stuff where I always thought like these people are nuts and, you know, I'm not going like when I'm 18, I'm not going to have to deal with this anymore. That was just usually mm -hmm. my train of thought at the time growing up because you would look at like magazines and stuff that they would hand out like brochures and you'd be like wow these gay people it'd be like don't be gay you're gonna get aids and like die of uh, like heroin overdoses and then they showed like pictures of like gay people dancing in like discos <laughs> with like needles hanging out of their arms and oh i was my like god <laughs> you know and i was like god this actually looks like minus the drugs this looks awesome looks like, like a blast <laughs> <laughs> Like, you're not selling the don't be gay thing to me. You're actually, if anything, like, making me want to do it more. So Yeah, the Jehovah's Witness anti-gay <laughs> propaganda is like, you're just going to hook up with everyone and have the best time. You're going to be well-dressed and dancing. <laughs> exactly, yeah. It's, like, obviously not a, not a scare tactic for me. Did your parents kind of have that same train of thought? Because you can be of a religion and also, like, not yeah, subscribe I mean, to everything. Well... I, my parents will probably never listen to this, but my dad told me that, you know, like, you know, he did some some male things when he was a kid mm. and that, like, it doesn't mean you're gay. And I was like, oh, that's interesting to hear. But I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, because I'm only doing male stuff with other males. You know yeah. what I mean? There's <laughs> yeah. no, like, girl stuff happening. I stopped yeah. that when I was, like, six. <laughs> Oh, but you did it pre-six? I love that. Yeah, totally. But you're a kid. You're just like grabbing and sucking whatever you can. Totally. I feel like your dad is like the dad and call me by your name. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we've all, we all used to hook up with guys. Oh, yeah. And you're like, yeah, no, I'm only going to do that. I feel like that's a real thing with guys. They have like their one or two friends that they like hook up with. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm-hmm. I've said many a time, like, I won't hook up with you unless you've had a dick in your mouth. Oh. It used to start off as like, it was like a joke or whatever, but then it was like, no, it's true. Like, I really only like a sexually explorative person. Yeah. You know, somebody who at least is like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm open to like, at least checking off the boxes and seeing if that's like something I'm not into. Yeah. But then I saw like Studio 54 and then I knew for sure I was, that I wanted to have sex with like dudes because I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, this is these guys are like covered in glitter and they're hot and they're like making out on drugs like this kind of looks like appealing to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, was yeah. Studio 54 a movie or like a doc? Yeah, with Ryan oh. Philippi. What? Yeah, you don't remember this? Summer Hayek? After Cruel She has like a failed singing career that happens in it. There's another Before movie with Ryan maybe? Phillippe and Selma Hayek. Oh, wait, no, it's Selma Hayek, not Selma Blair. <laughs> Selma Hayek, not Selma, yeah. That okay. is a good movie too, though. Yeah, Cruel Intentions is like a very sexy movie for like a yeah. sexually curious person too. Because there's like girls That's making mean. out. That gets yeah. off on being mean. Yeah. <laughs> After you hooked up with that first guy, were the floodgates open or and like were you comfortable being out? Um, well, you know, the funny thing about like being gay is like, especially in the nineties, is like mm -hmm. you didn't really have like a lot of like other gay people that you could yeah. look into in the media. So yeah. I thought that being gay was like, because of the stuff that I was raised with, I thought it was like wearing shiny shirts and going to like discos. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. I started like collecting that stuff and like dressing real crazy just because I was like, I thought that's what you, that's what being gay was. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I started like adorning myself in that sort of like ridiculous campy sort of like idea of what gay is, you know? Yeah. But then after like five years or like four years, I was like, all right, I'm over that. I'm just You're like, back. that's not me. I just love guys, but I don't, I don't need to fit a stereotype. Yeah, totally. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm here for some clothing drama every now and then, but. Who's not? Yeah. I know. Like exactly. that's, I think that's what gets in the way of a lot of people and definitely me. Like I came out fucking in my third, like double your age. You know, oh, like 30s yeah. is like insane. And I think it's because for a long time there was no bi representation. And it like you didn't know what a bi person looked like, especially like a female, you know, like. Oh, yeah. I oh, was yeah. like, 
well, if I say I'm gay, then like I'm a lesbian, but then also the only the lesbians that I've seen like look very different to me as well. Yeah. Like even the super femme ones, I'm like, I don't really fit in any of those boxes. And I think like what's great about like 2020, even though it's like a fucking terrible year in general, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. No one cares anymore. Yeah. They've yeah. got bigger fish to fry. They're not worried about whose dick you're sucking or not sucking. As long as it's like, are you going to suck my dick? <laughs> like then. <laughs> <laughs> then they care. <laughs> then they care. Yeah. So you used to do go-go dancing. Yeah. Did like you start all over in, the city for like 10 years. You started in New York or California? In New York. Okay, cool. Did you love it? Yeah. At first, you know, I was so sh- I used to be so shy mm-hmm. um, that I was like, I got to get out of my shyness. So I got a job at a strip club because mm-hmm. I was like, this will keep this. You know what I mean? This will help me get over my shyness. Truly. So it kind of worked, but it just wasn't like a safe environment. You know what I mean? Okay. So... I worked there for like a month and I was like, I just don't feel safe here. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I felt like I could have easily been raped and like no one would have known or cared. Nobody was looking out for you. Yeah, no, it was just like not a good place. And so then I like quit doing that and I was working at like um, Mac and Patricia Fields and a couple other places. Doing makeup? Doing makeup. Yeah. And then I got fired for like some nonsense. I always Mm -hmm. get fired from places. They have to like kick me out. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I just leave before they can fire me. (laughs) Oh, that's smart. That's the way to do it. But I did get fired and then I was on unemployment for like a year. And during that time, I was like, I need jobs, but I like unemployment. So I'm going to try and see what I can do that's not, you know, on the books. Mm. And so I started go-go dancing. And then I was like making good money doing it. So I just started doing that, you know, full time. Oh, cool. How old were you around then? 22, 23. Cute. And did you study doing yeah. makeup? Not really. I'm a, like, I paint and I draw. I'm like mm-hmm. pretty good. Do you want to see something? Mm-hmm. I was doing a painting of like the cock destroyers. Amazing. Are you classically trained? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. I took oh some God. like art classes as a kid. I just like am good at it. I don't know. I can't explain it. I just like know how to do stuff like that. I like to paint stuff. I do it for my own sort of um, relaxation time when I have like time off, you know. Mm-hmm. But then even yeah. being like a makeup artist, you know, like if you're like, hey. I can- yeah. So it translates, mm-hmm. you know, if you can paint, you can do makeup. It's just learning about like the textures and like the chemicals, the way they interact and stuff. I don't know. Do you want me to do your makeup now? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, no. I'm just thinking like it take it took me such a long time to learn how to do makeup. And like, I'm a girl who's been performing forever. Like, I just don't think it's that easy. But maybe you're just oh. talented. Well, oh, thank you. Just a talented boy. <laughs> um, and so then when we you were uh, when you were go go dancing, is that when you hopped on Instagram? Um, so I did a movie called Getting Getting Go, which was like about um, go go dancing. It was actually like mm-hmm. a fake documentary about me go go dancing. It's very meta. Mm-hmm. Um, and this it's guy like the like, Office, it's on, but for go go dancing. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> it's on who? It's on Hulu. You can watch it now. Oh, I'm super cool. young in it. So I did a bunch of um, movie, like independent movie circuit stuff. So then I got a Facebook, Instagram. I got an Instagram because of that, but also because my friend Joe told me to do it. He was like, you need to do this. I was like, all right. So I did it and it took off. Yeah. He was real smart. He's real good. He predicted a lot of good stuff for me. Yeah. Um, So when was it that you got into porn? (laughs) Well, funny story. The house I'm in, the house that I bought is, Mm -hmm. it was owned by this guy, Joe Netherworld. Amazing. He was, he's like, wow. Amazing. (laughs) Totally amazing guy. I have a picture of him, actually. You guys, he looks like Snape. He's an icon. <laughs> he's he's an icon. He was an icon. He passed away like a year ago. And so... Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's very bittersweet. Something real yeah. terrible happened where he was in a coma, and that was like not what he would ever, ever, ever wanted. So mm-hmm. he like finally kicked it, I think, from Corona. Um, oh, which is kind of like a blessing because he would have been like paralyzed in a hospital bed his rest yeah. of his life probably, which is like nobody wants that. You know what I mean? So Yeah. And so many people don't even like do the paperwork to decide 
that before because oh, nobody didn't. thinks it's gonna sure. yeah. yeah 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 he had never even thought about it but this was his house it's amazing um I, this is my third time mm-hmm. living here um okay so i mean he was, i was really close with him but basically he was the one that would like he had me start my like fragrance line he had me start making leather jackets he had me mm-hmm or doing all this stuff that I would have never had the confidence to do. He was like mm-hmm. my biggest fan. He was like, one day he was like, Matt, you got to do this OnlyFans thing. I think it's going to mm. be a real good thing for you. It's been going great. I love OnlyFans and I think everyone should do it. I think porn is like money. It's the great equalizer. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? If you mm-hmm. are performing sex acts, no one can really yell at you for anything. It's like you've already bared everything you have to bear. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's like you're a whore. It's like yeah, yeah, and making money. Yeah, yeah. So I I feel like it's extremely freeing in that sense, and it's also can be very financially successful. Mm-hmm. Um, which I feel very lucky about. I'm just cleaning off my mouth. <laughs> um, Was that from a sheet? My, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just all the pumpkin spice latte I've been sucking down all day. Pumpkin spice cum. Yeah. Mm. Tis the season. Yeah, ginger flavor. <laughs> <laughs> really, he's the one that got me started along that that path of selling my body for money. Yeah. Well, everybody like always says that, like selling your body for money. It's like any job you're doing is selling your body for money. You're selling your time, you're selling your ideas, you're selling oh, yeah. like your work, you know, like some jobs you're just coming at the end. Yeah. And that's that's a good job. You did a good job if you're coming yeah, at the like end. You did a good job. <laughs> so anyway, he told me to do the OnlyFans, and it was like really successful. And then I decided to start doing porn after that because I was curious about shooting porn. Like yeah, and there is a difference. OnlyFans is really for me like documenting my sex. Like everything is my decision. Everyone's okay. comfortable. I have all the cameras. It's really about just like sort of documenting male sex you know what mm-hmm. i mean male mm-hmm. interactions and like that sort of chemistry. people that you're actually with yeah well not like, dating but people i'm okay. actually sleeping with because yeah. i want to sleep with them yeah you know I mean? like yeah, yeah, genuine yeah. attraction porn's a little different you don't sometimes ever meet your Same person partner until like the day with. of yeah exactly so that can be a little crazy i'm very much someone that needs chemistry mm-hmm. in order to like work functionally you know what i mean so that can be interesting but it, it's also it's just more of like a like a movie set where when you're doing only fans it feels much more documentary There's it's no like world. more intimate too yeah absolutely yeah yeah so. has your only fans been affected since the bella thorne controversy um i think i haven't actually adjusted any of my financial stuff on my only fans for probably years now I keep trying to keep everything the same. I feel like it's like any product you want. You can't keep changing stuff. You want to keep the, it the same consistent. So people know what to look forward to. It becomes like reliable, you know? Mm-hmm. So I try not to change any of that stuff or change the numbers or do any like new banking or anything like that on there. So there's no like PPV. What's that? Pay-per-view. I don't do that either. I keep it as simple as possible. Like flat rate. How much is your flat a rate? Ten. Ten bucks. Ten bucks. And then what do you get for that? Two pumpkin spice. You get videos of you get like my sex diary basically, and then you can chat with me if you want. You can ask me questions about the stuff. You can ask me how, how to perform certain sexual acts if you are curious about Ooh. how to do it in a good way. Yeah. Ooh. What are the most common it's things a lot that of people sex ask and about? Jerking off and oh, feet. They love feet. People love feet. Feet and piss. Yeah. Like what to do with feet, or they want you to show feet and piss? They want me to show feet and piss. But a lot of times people are like, uh, oh, I would love to see you, how you suck a dick, or mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So I'll be like, oh, great. I'll put that on the list and make mm-hmm. sure to uh, get a good. <laughs> good blowjob scene (laughs) Mm -hmm. with the people which is like i think an important skill that they don't teach you how to how to (laughs) perform sexually like no one sits you down and is like this is the sensitive part this is what you want to touch and like you know what i mean this is foreskin you pull it back yeah 
two fingers usually fit in the box. Ooh. You know what I mean? Okay, so if you were getting turned on by those instructional sexy stories or the mouth noises or the Foley work, um, then I have a hot tip for you because we're always talking about how important physical health, mental health, and especially sexual health are. Like I know a lot of people like going to the gym, they like meditating. Those are all good for yourself, but we like to take care of the sexual aspect of ourselves. And you need to prioritize your pleasure along with your body and mind. So again, if you like audio stuff, if any of this is getting you going, Dipsy is an audio app full of short, sexy stories and guided sessions that are designed to turn you on and help you get in touch with yourself. The stories are very relatable. They're super immersive. So you feel like you're right there. Um, And like, you know how I was talking about POVs? This is like POVs, but with no effort. It's just like somebody talking to you um, or a story or somebody doing instructional and you feel like you're right there. And there's something for everyone, whoever and whatever you're into. Um, They add new content every week. So there's always more to explore. You can find stories about a spontaneous hookup with a hot stranger, getting closer with that sexy yoga instructor you can't stop thinking about, or even stories about trying that new toy together or getting tied up. Like the possibilities are endless and the wellness sessions can help you unlock new confidence or heighten intimacy with your partner. Um, Like, yeah, you don't just listen alone. You can listen with a person. And again, they add new stories every week so you never get bored. So spice up things today with Dipsy. I am loving Dipsy. Like I know I always say like I don't really like need porn to get turned on. For me, some of these like aren't to get turned on. It's like to explore what turns us on, if that makes sense. So like we've been listening to stuff together and like it just like opens conversations and like you'll hear somebody doing like a move to somebody else and then you're like, can you do that move on me? And it's really great um, to connect with yourself or another person. And for listeners of the show, Dipsy is offering a 30 day free trial. When you go to dipsystories.com slash how come that is a 30 day free trial. When you go to Dipsy, D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash how come dipsystories.com slash how come you are going to love it speaking of things that we love so i'm currently in the second bedroom with grace um she has taken over an entire room in this house that does not belong to her like i thought i was an unwelcome guest and then she came here but it turns out ben's parents like really like her and they really like me And like initially I thought it was just because like I gave them a chaise from all form and Grace hasn't even given them a chaise from all form. So maybe they just like our personalities. I don't know. I was putting all my stock in all form because the chaise that we received from them is one of the most fantastic pieces of furniture I have ever seen. So if you've listened to season two, you've probably heard me talk about my Helix mattress or this season or if you've ever heard me speak in my life because the Helix mattress is the most fantastic thing in the entire world and Charlotte had one and I fell asleep right away and I was like, I need to have one of these and then I got one. They started supporting this podcast and we are so obsessed with them and we have very exciting news. This year, Helix has gone beyond the bedroom and started making sofas. They just launched a new company called Allform and they're making premium customizable sofas and chairs shipped right to your door. So what makes an Allform sofa really cool? Why would I assume that these two people would just feed me and love me because of a chaise? For starters, it's the easiest way you can customize a sofa using premium materials at a fraction of the cost of traditional stores like They must think I spent so much on this. And what's crazy about how customizable they are is you can pick your fabric and it is spill, stain, and scratch resistant. The sofa color, you can pick the color of the legs, the sofa size, the shape to make sure it's perfect for you and your home. Um, They also have armchairs and love seats that go all the way up to an eight seat sectional. So there's something for everyone and you can always start small and then buy more seats later on if you want your all form sofa to grow and change when you move, it can do that. 
Um, all firm sofas are also delivered directly to your home with fast, free shipping. Just like Helix, it shows up and you're like, what? How? That was the easiest thing in the world. So in the past, if you wanted to order a sofa, oh my God, I remember it could take weeks or even months to arrive, especially a customizable one. And you would need somebody to come assemble it in your home new. Allform takes just three to seven days to arrive in the mail and you can assemble it yourself in a few minutes. We did it. No tools needed. Like me and Ben, 15 minutes and they were obsessed. Um, yeah, we have the Allform chaise. It is like a, like a beige with light brown legs, uh, Ben's dad loves reading in it. Grace likes to sit in it now because she's decided that she's allowed to do that and go just go into their room. So rude. They still like her though. Um, and they're obsessed with it. Like, And it's just a very attractive piece of furniture. It's super cozy as well. And everybody loved the setup. It also just goes perfectly with the room. And I feel so adult that I could like afford them a customizable chaise lounge. Um, so if getting a sofa without trying it in a store sounds a little risky to you, you don't need to worry. You get 100 days to decide if you want to keep it. That is more than three months. And if you don't love it, they'll pick it up for free and give you a full refund. What? Full. Yeah. They also have a forever warranty, literally forever. So to find your perfect sofa, check out allform.com slash how come. And allform is offering 20% off all orders to our listeners at allform.com slash how come. Okay, let's get back to the episode. Or maybe you want to hear Grace purr a little more? Grace, come here. Say something. No, she's mad at me now. Okay, well, when we last left off in the episode, Matthew was giving us some sexual tips. Now, let me ask him for some sexual tips. Okay, here we go. You want to give our listeners the ideal blowjob rundown? Well, it really depends on what the person receiving the blowjob is yeah. comfortable with and what their boundaries are. So, mm. you know, I like a little ass play if mm-hmm. I'm performing a blowjob. So that means sometimes like a wet knuckle mm. or even just like a massaging of the prostate. But something that never fails is a good, you get like a round Thing like that and another one and you do like the indian burn motion yeah and then two you just hands put them out cranking the in opposite yeah. directions yes yeah. yes and then the occasional okay symbol which is what like is you just go all the way down yeah well you, you just it. like pull all the way down and then you like swallow it and then you pull up yeah you know i, I mean? like that knuckle tip though because i feel like a finger is can be very like um interesting yeah where yeah. a knuckle is like for you some know people ends. yeah yeah no, but then some, some people, people it's like, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> i was at a bar one time and there was like a go-go dancer and i was like god this guy's so sexy i should tip him i was wasted by the way mm-hmm. and so i go to, i go to tip him and i put the money in his jock strap and he's like standing above me i put it in and i like slide my hand down his butt i'm like oh my <laughs> god he's like lubed up and so then, I, and then he like kind of pushes my hand into his, into his like butt, like butthole? so I'm playing yeah. with his hole a little bit, and then he just like sits on it, <gasps> and it s- sits all the way on it, <laughs> like on the bar. And I just remember looking over to my friends like, "Oh my god!" And everyone's like mouth was just, they were all silent, just like in that's awe like that that happened because it was all I'll... within like a minute long. It was, oh like, happened god. so quick. Like, okay, that is the part of male gay bar culture that I don't know if I've been able to wrap my head around yet is like the consent thing. Because like, where was the consent in that conversation? For him or for me? Both of you. (laughs) There wasn't anything. It just, it was just like, almost like literally he slipped and fell fell on a hand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Oops. (laughs) (laughs) It was, yeah. (laughs) And everybody in the bar is like, whoa, and like thinks it's cool. But like, I'm sure there are some people who are like, no. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I was I mean, not maybe. ready to see that. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Probably not at that bar, per se. I think at that bar, everyone it's like, was you there. Know. Just, it was called the, it was like the cock in the East Village. You know what okay. I mean? Yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. like closed now, but yeah, I think it was just like that, that bar. 
It's like the box that, like, if you go there, you know you're going to see some stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah. Do you know who Rose Wood is? She's, like, my favorite performer there. She's amazing. What does she do? All sorts of... I don't want to give away too many of her, her tricks. Her surprises. But she has one... Yeah. yeah. The first, I'll say this. The first time I saw her perform, she pulled a bag of heroin out of her ass, ripped it open, and, like, did a bunch of lines of it. <laughs> Oh my on stage god! And then like pretended to have like a heart attack and like die on stage. Yeah, no. The box for anybody yeah. who's not in New York City has never been to New York City. It's a place in the city that it's like a club, and then there's also live performers that usually are naked, usually are are shitting something Pissing out of their body. You. Yeah, yeah. Then <laughs> yeah. eating it, then shitting it again, like pulling out their tits, <laughs> then their dick, sucking their own dick. Like it's that's what you go to see. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. what a time. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds more crass than it is. It's done so artfully. It's done so Usually, well. You're like blown away. Like, I can't believe I paid money for this and I want to see it again. I went for my like very conservative friend's bachelorette party. <laughs> like very conservative, but like we all like we're down for it because it was like woo this is what you know it's a, it's a party and like yeah you're at a table you're just clubbing and then maybe like every 30 minutes there's like an act but everybody really watches it like it's theater you know like it's super respectful yeah she also yeah. does the pee the pee thing where she pees on the crowd she comes out as like a clown i haven't seen pees that. on the it's cold <laughs> water it's not like <laughs> it's not actually pee but it looks I don't think so, no. Mm, so the guy that but I saw eat real. his own Maybe shit probably wasn't shit either. Uh, I think we're probably talking about the same person. Does this person have big boobs and a receding Huge hairline? Huge boobs, yes. <laughs> That's Rose Wood. Okay, yeah, yeah Rose Wood rules. That's Rose Wood. <laughs> she rolls, yeah. How did you guys meet, you and Joe? On Facebook, he invited okay. me to come participate in a... A music video for this band psycho charger where he mm -hmm. covered me in blood it was like a blood orgy basically in the in the basement in the house i'm in right now wild yeah. it's a very special house for me i'm very ha happy that i got it yeah I, I just signed on it like two days ago so congratulations mazel tov thank you thank you but yeah so you were like one of the first instagram models basically oh, yeah he told me to do instagram too did he? So on, how did he discover you then? Like just from Facebook? Yeah, he was on Facebook and he was like, I love your look. And I've watched some videos that people have posted of you dancing. And mm -hmm. I want you to be in this music video. I show up to this house. He throws me in the basement with like some underwear <laughs> on, covers me in blood. And there is this <laughs> band there. I have the card right here. It's for Psycho Charger. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. No. They're like a upstate punk band okay anyway so i was just in their music video and there's like girls walking on me in high heels and i had like blood all over me it was like gonna supposed need to be that link vampire orgy thing you know what i amazing. mean amazing <laughs> wait what year was this 15 years ago maybe yeah so then after that video he was just like i'm gonna take you under my wing or like he just like always in touch base with me and um offered me advice on, and we would just talk and be friends and he was just always like rooting for me like telling me like fuck these people you're a yeah. valuable person don't mm. settle for less and like he would just coach me you know oh that's so nice it's like a mentor yeah absolutely he had a way of, he like one of his things that he would do was like he would collect kind different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. He definitely had a pension for like bi curious guys. That was like his thing. It sounds so sketchy, but it was like so crazy. I was moving here and the person upstairs for me was like, Oh, I heard you're like moving into this house. I'm like, yeah. And he's like the like Netherwoods house. And I'm like, netherworld yeah you know him he's like oh yeah he like tried to get me to start doing porn and like the thing is like i feel like a lot of people especially straight guys just never get told that they're beautiful they never get told that they're like oh, you know yeah. what i mean they don't ever get that like attention of being like fond over because they're supposed to be the ones that are chasing people so like when you chase mm -hmm. them there's something inside of them that makes them like a little bit extra goose you know what i mean mm -hmm. they like like that a little extra you know 
It's the same way like straight guys will flirt with gay guys. It's like they don't necessarily want to fuck All them. The they just love the attention. They love the ego boost. Exactly. Yeah, and I think that's something that's weird that we do that. Like I compliment my boyfriend all the time. I'm always like, oh, you're yeah, fucking but- gorgeous. But like we're already dating. But like. Also, you're bi. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like you have a more <laughs> diverse idea yeah, of yeah, what yeah. sexuality is. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. No, I guess like straight, straight, straight girl and straight girl culture. But I feel like I've been part of straight girl culture for such a long time and yeah. like so embedded in it that it was like you don't call guys hot because then like you're kind of like showing yourself too much. Yeah. You, you know, like you kind of have to play this like cat and mouse with them, which I'm so over. I know. No one, guys don't, no one knows what that is. Guys don't know what that is. Guys are so simple. They want, like, my friend that was telling me, he's like, oh, God, it's so easy to fuck guys. All you got to do is ask them. Yeah, (laughs) literally. (laughs) Literally. Yeah. So there is this sort of, like, hurdle. (laughs) Yeah, and I think that the other thing is, like, sometimes we're not just trying to fuck them, like, because a lot of what, like, you're sold as, like, a little girl is, like, you want them to love you. You know, like, you trap them into romance. So, like, it's not even about the fucking. It's, like, this whole other game where it's, like, girl, just fuck them and then figure out if you like them and then date them. (laughs) Fuck them for six months and then see if you like them. That's my move. <laughs> Fuck them for six months, trick them into dating me, and then figure out if I if this was even worth it. Yeah. <laughs> get pregnant, get an abortion to show that you're cool. Um, move on with your romance for the next four years of your life. Move in with his parents. <laughs> that sounds awesome, though. They cook for you. Yes. That itself is worth it. At the other day I said to him, this is like a mean thing to say, but like, as our Robin in New Zealand says, treat him mean, keep him keen. I was like, um, your parents are my favorite thing about you. Like, <laughs> they are treasures. They make me feel like valuable. Oh, that's so sweet. It's kind of like what um, Joe did for you. Yeah, yeah. No, everybody needs that. Everyone needs that. I would not be where I am today or doing anything I am without people believing in me and telling mm-hmm. me to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I read this tweet today that was like, what would you say to your younger self if you could if you could go back in time and only say three words? It's like a thinker. Um, so you don't have to have an answer yet, but if you think of one, let me know. But mine was like, just like something like, just do it. You know, or like, or like be your truest self or like believe in your, like something like hokey like that. Because I feel like if I had just had somebody being like, (laughs) fuck everybody, but like she could misinterpret that. Um, That And would that little hoe. Um, (laughs) She'd be like, oh, pull my Victoria's Secret G-string up higher. Yes. Um, No, but like I've, I'd always wanted to do stand up. And there was really nobody saying, you can. You know, I've always wanted to act or write or direct or do stuff. You know, it's, it's, and like, it's up to the person to give themselves permission, ultimately. Yeah, of course, of course. But at the same time, it's like, if you're an artistic person and it's performative in nature in any way, you're doing it for other people. If you don't get that performative validation to tell you to keep going, it's like, what's the point of doing it? Yeah. It's like very, it's super touching, but also a very strange feeling living in a house with, of somebody who like raised you or like, not like raised you, but like essentially like helped you become the person that you are. Yeah, for sure. It, it seems it's so bittersweet. Like I obviously like he is dead and I miss him. You know what I mean? Like all the time. But it's also, I feel like he's also like going to pop out any, at any second. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. there's like so many like familiar memories here, so it's actually very comforting mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, which that's is how I felt so when strange. Um, my grandmother passed away, and everybody and I was still living in her house and stuff. And everyone's like, "Oh, isn't that weird?" or whatever. And I'm like, "Well, yeah, like it is weird, but also at the same time, I'd have that feeling of like I think she's just sleeping in her room, so it's like comforting." Yeah. yeah. And totally. it's a reminder of, the, like, she let you start a sex podcast in her house. You know, like, he helped you start <laughs> your Instagram career, your yeah. OnlyFans career. Yeah. 
like everything. Was he supportive when you went to like, so to speak, mainstream porn? He was, well, he was like a little surprised, Mm -hmm. but he got it because at the end of the day, I want, I wanted the, um, well, I have a great relationship actually with men.com. Who's the people that I'm signed with. So it's just a, it's just a, they have access to so much more than, and so many more viewers than I would have on just OnlyFans alone. So mm-hmm. like it feeds the, the, the whole beast, you know? Mm-hmm. And has it been like a generally like good experience for you? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I imagine it's different too. Cause like you're coming from a place of like, you're already incredibly successful on your own. You already have daddy couture, you, you know, like your only fans can support you. And so maybe you would get treated with a little more respect than like a noob coming into the industry. I mean, probably I feel one thing that Joe used to tell me all the time was like, he, you live such a charmed life. Like people have a tendency to want to do things and help you. Mm -hmm. because you're you you know and i'd be like what are you talking about but now i now that i'm older i kind of see it like people are very nice to me and kind to me and Mm -hmm. usually do things that are not not people aren't really that shady to me to be honest like i don't come into contact with a lot of shady people i just kind of like keep them away so it's but yeah everything's fine i don't think i don't think i have ever had anything that felt really like um, I also have, yeah, and I haven't yeah. like met anyone that's had like a bad, like a super bad experience. At least not with the company that I'm working with. Good. Maybe with some, some other people. Yeah, but yeah, no, I like to hear that because there was um, there was an episode we had that was strictly for Patreon last season, and you guys should go back and listen to it. Um, with Danny Wilde, who quit doing porn altogether, um, and he was doing mm. straight porn and gay porn, and I don't think it was like a mistreatment of him, but it was like this expectation of him to always have like a rock hard boner, so that he like needed to start doing drugs and stuff, and then it like got, um, like it affected his actual life and his health. Yeah, I mean it. it- it can definitely be difficult maintaining an erection sometimes when you're on set, especially when there's like 45 people watching you. But Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not shooting like porns back to back to back to back. You know what I mean? So it's not really that. I try and look at it more of like shooting a feature film. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I have a couple projects lined up for the year. It's not like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I think that makes it a lot easier. I get burnout easy, easy on like anything really yeah so. a same I, I like love project based things because it's like yeah. it's over once it's over then you can move on do something put it in a box <laughs> exactly. move it to the side yeah <laughs> check it off um and yeah. it's probably it's good too because like you have total control over your only fans so it's like if i take a break from like shooting like feature films like I don't, I don't need a time schedule for when I'm gonna come on this person. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Also, it's like not always about coming. Sometimes, like mm-hmm. sometimes I'm just there to like please the bottom or to like do something with feet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It doesn't always like encapsulate ejaculation and like. There's so many different layers of sexuality and like totally. sensuality that mm-hmm. are not. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I know. Even I forget though. I literally am like, yeah, coming. But like, it's true. It's like there are porns now that are just touch, you know, and just showing people. Yeah. 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 Cuddle, cuddle porn. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, The average rate for male performers in straight porn is $500 to $600. Whereas the rate for gay porn is usually three times that amount. Because of that, have you worked with a lot of, straight people or I guess real straight guys who do gay porn. I've met a lot of guys and I've worked with guys that have and done scene with scenes with guys that have like wives and girlfriends Mm -hmm. at home. Yeah. Like their full time long term partners are women, but they have sex with men for money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is totally true. Is it different? Um, as an actor with them or it's like all the same for you? Uh, No, usually they're very professional and courteous and um, nice. Usually, 
Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like it's almost easier sometimes because they don't like care. They're not like trying to like turn it into anything else that it's not. You know what I mean? They're yeah, like, yeah, I no, gotta like, let's bang this out and get this done. I gotta be home with the girl in like three mm-hmm. hours. You know what I mean? There's no like underlying like, right. sexual tension that it's like, what are we <laughs> afterwards? Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? Which <laughs> yeah. I feel like with gay performers, sometimes there is always that sort of like cat dance. Mm -hmm. where they kind of circle around each other to figure out whose butt smells better. Mm -hmm. You're like, it's mine. (laughs) Eight pumpkin spice everything today. (laughs) Yeah. Or that. (laughs) Or that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, There was, I might be interviewing this guy, but there was um, a contestant this year on Love Island US who was brought on the show. Do you remember this? Mm -mm. Okay. Maybe. he was brought on the show, um, and Love Island is generally a, a heteronormative show. Um, there's only yeah. been one bisexual contestant, and she, like, killed herself. It was really fucking sad. Um, she got super yeah. bullied. Um, so Love Island's history with queer contestants is not great. Um, and then this year, Love Island US had this guy on Noah Purvis, who came onto the show to date girls, um, was like a really great contestant. Like I was down for him. And then he got pulled off um, and they didn't say why. The producers just like had like a note at the beginning of the show that was like, Noah went home and everybody else moved on with their days or whatever. And you're like, why? And it turns out that Noah used to do gay porn. Oh, yeah. Which is like, first of all, producers, (laughs) like, did you not do your research before casting someone? No, obviously not. Um, and second, I wonder if it would be the same reaction if it was straight porn. Absolutely not. The funny thing is, like, this is very much this is very much similar to the thing that happened in RuPaul's Drag Race with Cherry Pie. You know what I mean? Where it's like oh. Cherry Pie was pulled off the season. No mm-hmm. one knows why, because she was like catfishing this guy and getting him to like take. I mean, like, sure, yeah, she was like <laughs> steroids and stuff. Yeah, that was like an actual very bad, evil person thing to do. Yeah. If anybody didn't watch (laughs) Drag Race, Sherry Pie was a contestant. She got pulled off because she literally was catfishing her friends um, and pretending (laughs) to be a casting agent, telling them to like do porn and also like take hormones for years. Yes. And then on on Drag Race, they just cut her out of the season. So yeah. it's funny because you have that sort of like comparison to yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like, it's just like, I don't think it's that big of a, I don't think, I wouldn't have pulled him off. If anything, I thought that would have been better advertisement for the show to yeah. have him on there. Totally. You know what I mean? I mean, it also like maybe the female contestants on the show wouldn't be comfortable dating a guy who had done gay porn or something, but like, I wish they were like, I wish that he did fall in love with one of them. And then that was part of the conversation. Does he have an only fans? He should. Cause he'd probably know. be r- racking it in right now. Yeah, definitely. But also, so I was having the conversation with two of my friends who I was just staying with in LA, Tim and Clayton, shout out, love you. Um, because they were, we were having this, uh, conversation that they were like "Ooh, i wonder if he's actually bi and the three of us were like watching his porn and like fun to, like wondering like is he liking this like <laughs> we didn't we didn't know and like tim was like no he's totally straight he hates it clayton's like no he's totally gay i'm like no he's bi um but at the end of the day it's like you can't really tell when somebody's doing like an acting job true but I do want to say no one puts themselves in a position that they don't want to be in. You know what I mean? Like, mm. for whatever reason, subconsciously, if you're going back to do that work, you probably want to be there for whatever the or benefits money. cost analysis that you've done in your head. Money. Yeah, money. Sure. But like, even then, there's like a cost. There's a cost analysis. Like, does this take away from my sexuality too much? Or is this something I'm OK with doing? And Mm -hmm. it usually probably falls into the lines of you're okay having sex with men and the money is a bonus. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Or vice versa. The money is why you're doing it and having having sex with men men is a bonus. bonus. Yeah. Because it's not like you're making so much money that you just can't say no to it. 
You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. There's an obvious want there. Yeah. Have you ever talked to some of the guys who like go home to their, you, you know, like about it? Yeah. I just think that they think they recognize as bi. They yeah. like okay. having probably yeah. m- more sort of emotional based relationships with mm-hmm. women. Mm hmm. And also enjoy having sex with men. I mean, honestly, it's like very ancient Rome, you know? Totally, totally. So it's good that those, I mean, not good that they're bi, but I do think it's cool if you are a performer that you can get those like sexual urges out in like a professional setting um, and then go home to your wife. Who's cool with it? Yeah. I mean, more power to you. I'm not trying to step on anyone's mojo or flow Mm -hmm. or anything like that. It's also like you can't expect one person to like eat ice cream their entire life, like one flavor of ice cream. When there's like a whole world of food out there, Mm -hmm. it's kind of like that'd be that'd be pretty selfish to expect, you know. There's also people don't really understand the difference between like you can have a sexual attraction to a gender and not a romantic attraction oh yeah you know like For sure just because you're bisexual doesn't mean you're necessarily bi-romantic yeah you know and that's like a real thing and that's also something that i only learned like a few years ago like th- even just that terminology it's like, yeah i've never heard it but i totally get what you're saying yeah and like i i do think the guys that like if they're they're bisexual, not bi-romantic. They are so comfortable with their sexuality because like, they're like, this doesn't mean anything about me as like, doesn't take away from yeah. like my straight side either. Have you ever done straight porn? No, but I totally would, to be honest, especially after working so closely with like female straight porn stars. It's like, oh, it's just like, it's very performative. And yeah. that makes it feel more comfortable and yeah. less like, romantic i think the romantic thing is the thing that i'm not so into but the actual sex part like you were saying is like whatever yeah. you know what i mean but it's acting yeah. like you act the romance you act the sex and then like the viewers get to like have this like cool little cosplay where like they'll be like oh i could date Matthew. yeah it's <laughs> yeah. a possibility you're right that's a good idea i should do that mm-hmm. i'm gonna put that on the foot list mm-hmm. expand your horizons <laughs> Um, but yeah, you were saying that people will write to you sometimes on OnlyFans and ask how to do certain sexual acts. Is there one that reigns supreme that they're always asking about? Always more foot stuff, which it's, I I don't know if you've ever tried doing this, but it's hard taking pictures of your feet. Like it's actually, especially if you're doing it selfie style, it's always like from the side, the same angle. You're just limited by the like joints that you have. Why? Because you you need your whole body in it? Well, kind of like how are you taking a foot photo? You know what I mean? It's like you got to scrunch up and oh, like yeah. A, if you're like trying to get difficult. the underside, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which the underside is what people really love. But oh, I mean, not the in betweens. Oh, they like that too, like a little tongue action. But like, it, for instance, I would need someone else's foot to do that. Like, it's very difficult to. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, um, you know, there's that. And then, like, just a lot of, like, people have asked for, like, douching videos, like, how to douche, mm. all, kind, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Honestly, you guys, if you need a douching video, because we haven't really, I mean, we kind of talked about it, Anal 101, but, like, head over to Matthew's OnlyFans, because it's helpful, and you should douche. It's a nice thing to do for you and them. Also, you can just watch me hook up with people. Yeah. Which is also fun and surprisingly funny. I love when it's funny and fun too. I don't know if that's a good thing to sell it, but. (laughs) No, they like funny, sexy stuff. That's why they're here. Uh, Yeah, good. Yeah. They're like, we love getting horny and then like laughing (laughs) in between. You little freaks, you little perverts. I love you so. It's the best part. Mm -hmm. Do you get lots of questions from from your listeners? Hell yeah. We get the most. Um, I actually really liked, cause there are some people who are still working on coming 
There's actually there's a woman oh, yeah. named Jessica who I'm I'm gonna put this on the Patreon, you guys. I'm not ready to put it on the podcast because like I don't know where her journey is going. I hope it's gonna end in orgasm. But she's 34. She's not come yet. She reached out to me and she was like, I need your help. And so now I'm kind of like taking her on as like my project. Um, because I feel like I've already done it for me. I have so many people writing in saying that they've successfully done it. And like, yeah, I think we're going to do like a little Patreon only web series of me and Jessica and I'm going to give her assignments and stuff. And I'm going to start collecting assignments from our guests again. And I loved the assignment that, um, you kind of answered on the pre-interview form, but, um, oh. Yeah, so we, we're we going to ask people, what is your advice to people who can't come? And you had said, find out what you're psychologically turned on by. Yeah. So, like, think about the thing that, like, triggered your little sex nerves the first time. And then, mm-hmm. like, follow that rabbit hole, whatever, mm-hmm. wherever it goes. So, like, if it was Star Wars, maybe you saw Jabba the Hutt and you got super turned on by a blob. Maybe you're into squishing. Yeah. <laughs> but like, get into what makes you psychologically turned on. That's so fun. And, like, live in your fantasies and, like, kind of play around there. And also yeah. absolve yourself of any, like judgment or shame when it comes to fantasies because a fantasy is not necessarily something you want to do yeah um totally or like find porn based on or something like that have you done all of your fantasies oh hell no but i did just go to <laughs> um spirit of halloween and i bought so many costumes to make tiktoks with but also i think like do horny stuff with yeah I got a slytherin tie and hair bow and robes okay and Love it. I can see some shit going down for me. Yeah, because it's uh, got the Harry Potter mm-hmm. sort of reference. Ben's going to Avada Kedavra this pussy. <laughs> <laughs> That's his joke, not mine, but I'm using it. Um, it's good. It's a funny one. It's a funny one. Yeah, both of us are just like nerd fantasies. It's like Star Wars, Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. But it's cool. And a lot of people, like, whatever your fantasy is, like, just know that so many other people have that, probably. Like, it takes a really special weirdo to come up with something new. Yeah. Or illegal. Or illegal. I figured this would be a good thing to talk about with you. I don't know if anyone has ever told you this as Mm. a man, but, like, ejaculating from, like, jerking off your dick is Mm -hmm. totally different than ejaculating while getting fucked in the ass. They're two different orgasms really yeah go on they definitely have their differences like when you come Uh and you're like just jerking off it's not as intense still feels good it feels like along the levels of like Uh. taking a really nice piss like you Mm -hmm. had to do it for a long time and then you finally get there and you have this overwhelming sense of relief right Mm -hmm. but like getting fucked is like totally different it's like much more intense and like well, I mean, obviously, I don't know if you've ever done anal, but the orgasm itself for men is like totally different. I just got reminded of this because I had sex with someone that had been with a girl for a long time and they hadn't had much like anal stimulation. And then like, yeah, yeah. We, I, we did that and he was like, oh my God, this is like not what I'm used to. It's like so different. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. I forgot about how it's such a totally a different experience being plugged up. <laughs> yeah. I have a friend who like after we did our anal 101 episode, she was like, oh, yeah, I like I was masturbating the other day. And then like because of anal 101, I decided to like put some fingers at my butt like while I was like masturbating. And she was like, and it was a totally different experience. Oh, yeah. And she did both sides at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. taking a picture on an iPhone. I'm a little <laughs> jealous. That seems like fun. You could do the same <laughs> thing, you know, like yeah, finger your I'm button jack off. Vagina. I can't like that's this is really why I hope Elon Musk's Neuralink happens. I want to know what it feels like to come as a woman. I want to know what it feels like to come as a like as a dick haver. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty, it's nice. It's nice. Have you ever jacked off with something up your butt that is not another person? For sure. Yeah, because I think that's more what, like, you're, I think you're thinking that she put something up her vagina. She didn't. It's like oh, no. in your butt and then diddling the clip. <laughs> oh. But DP is great too. Yeah. 
You ever been Eiffel Towered? Probably, you know, when I was like 15. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a fun DP. A I actually... <laughs> I'm crying. This is like therapy for me. <laughs> is it? I don't know. Well, Matthew Camp, this has been an absolute pleasure. I'm so happy we finally got to chat. Thank you. Thank you. Can anybody find our episode of your radio show? Absolutely. It should be. Yeah, it's on yeah. Uh, Spotify. Happy Camper Show. H-A-P-P-I-E. Okay, show. awesome. Yeah. yeah, go listen to that because we had a grand old time. That was like fucking two years ago at this that, point. Oh, um, yeah, that was really fun. <laughs> But where else can people find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Matthew Camp. You can find me on Twitter at Matthew Camp NYC. And you can find me on OnlyFans at OnlyFans.com backslash Matthew Camp. Mm-hmm. You got a whole queer clothing line called Daddy Couture. Daddy guys... Couture, that's right. We didn't even talk. What, we didn't talk about Daddy Couture? Cock Destroyers, but that's okay. What about Cock Destroyers? We're fucking Cock Destroyers. They're part of Daddy Couture. They are? There, yeah. Well, Rebecca's the other co-owner. Yeah. Oh my God, that's insane. Okay, yeah. well then we need them on this podcast. Yeah. Next time Are I'm you in kidding? London or UK. Yeah. Holy shit. Okay. You guys look up the cock destroyers. They're goddesses. Yeah. Of, among men, for sure. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Sign up for OnlyFans. Go see Matthew on there. Um, also, get on OnlyFans. If you think you have money to make out there by playing with your hole on... It just makes it less of a stigma for everyone else. Like, join so the true. fantasy. It's yeah. so true. Yeah. No, I like... I like go back and forth. On doing it? You mm. should do it. Like, my nipples are already on Google. Why not... <laughs> also we just came out with a new companion hoodie it's all the colors of the rainbow it is so beautiful it's in our bio we have a beautiful link bush do you get it it's like a link tree but a bush for our bushes um i just trimmed my link bush but the links are plentiful um so go check that out follow us at how come podcast follow me remy casimir give us a rate review subscribe please please that's all we ask of you um and yeah matthew camp i have to ask you this i have to ask everybody after a sexual experience which this has been did you finish uh yeah absolutely like three amazing. times amazing i love that for you <laughs> um is there something else you wanted to say nope that's it i love okay, you thank cool. you for having me on the okay. show you're awesome i love you too thank you so much for doing it um and you'll you. see you next time on how come goodbye Bye. It's not you, it's me I try so hard to finish honestly They say you'll know When you go all the way from A right down to O Oh no I think that I've still got a ways to go Oh oh I'm sick of this and I have got to know how come? How come? How come I can't achieve? How come I can't achieve? I'm rolling up my sleeves. I'm rolling up my sleeves. Oh, baby, I believe these guests can help. Cause I can't do it by myself. I wanna just.